All right, kiddos, we're continuing our discussion on thermodynamics. We talked about heats of formation in the last video. Today we're going to talk about Hess's Law. Um, Hess's Law, I think, is pretty interesting, and the problems are fun to do. I Hopefully um, you'll enjoy them as much as I do. Um, let's take this first example here. Suppose you're studying the formation of sulfur trioxide in the atmosphere. You need to determine the delta H for this reaction, so we don't know what that is. Unfortunately, the laboratory experiments to produce sulfur trioxide and determine its delta H result in a mixture of products that is actually mostly sulfur dioxide, not sulfur trioxide, which is what we're after. So in situations such as this, we can calculate the delta H by using Hess's law. Now, formally, it's called Hess's Law of Heat Summation. This states that if you can add two or more thermochemical equations to produce a final equation for a reaction, then the sum of the enthalpy changes, the delta H's, for the individual reactions will be the enthalpy change for the final reaction. So, if I know the heat of formation, of sulfur dioxide from its elements. Remember, we're after sulfur trioxide, just by the way. So that would be S and O2 to form SO2. Now you'll notice that this is balanced for two moles here. Um, don't worry about that for right now. You'll see why, I think, as we finish this up. Normally we use one mole. But we're going to go ahead and balance it for two moles here. The delta H for the formation of two moles of sulfur dioxide from its elements is negative 594 kilojoules. Then, if that sulfur dioxide is oxidized further by oxygen gas, we can form sulfur trioxide. And that delta H can also be found. Now, if we take these two equations together, the first one and the second one, and add them like we do math equations. But this arrow here, we're going to pretend is an equal sign. You'll see that there are some things that cancel out when they're added together. So let's add these together. Here's my arrow. And don't I have two SO2s on this side? I have two S's on this side. I have two O2s here plus another O2 for a total of three O2s on the left side. On the right side, I have these two SO2s and these two SO3s right there. So I've added those together. Now, let's cancel out the things that are the same on both sides. So we can cancel out these two SO2s with these two SO2s. And look at what we're left with. We're left with two S's plus three O2s make two SO3s. Now, isn't that identical to the equation that we were looking at just a few minutes ago? Two S's plus three O2's make two SO3's. And we didn't know the heat of that reaction. Well, according to Hess's law, let's read that again. What we can do is we can add two or more thermochemical equations together to produce the final equation, the one we're looking for then the sum of the delta H's for those individual reactions will be the enthalpy change for the final reaction. So if I take this delta H and this delta H and add them together, since the equations add together to the reaction I'm after, their heats will add together for the reaction I'm after. And that's called Hess's Law. Now, the thermochemical equations are usually written and balanced for one mole of product. That's what we're used to, folks. Often that means that fractional coefficients must be used. For example, the thermochemical equation for the reaction between sulfur and oxygen to form one mole of sulfur trioxide would be the following. So if I used, uh, if I only wanted to make one mole of product, I'd cut that in half, and then I would cut this in half, and I would cut this in half. So I have S plus three halves of an O2, or one and a half, to make SO3. And of course, the heat for that reaction would be cut in half also. All right. Well, I think the best way to, to, to learn and understand Hess's Law is just by trying a few problems. 
So that's what I'm going to try to do with you right now. So let's say I wanted to find the delta H for this reaction here. So the delta H is a mystery. We're taking hydrogen peroxide and we're decomposing it into water and oxygen gas. So let me give you two equations that I can use to add up to the reaction that I'm after. I know the heat of taking two hydrogens and an oxygen in their elemental state to form two waters is negative 572. And then hydrogen and oxygen to form H2O2, the delta H of that reaction is negative 188. So I'm going to use these two equations to add up for the equation uh, to the equation that I want. Now the way I like to do these is I like to draw a line first and I'm going to put the reaction that I want underneath that line. So two H2O2's react to form two H2O's and O2's. And that's the reaction that I'm after, folks. Now, let's take a look at my first reaction. It has H2O on the product side, which is exactly where I want it. So I'm going to write it as it's written. 2H2s plus an O2 react to form 2H2Os. Now the delta H for that reaction is negative 572 kilojoules. Okay, so I've got my two waters on the product side where I, where I want them. Now let's take a look at the second reaction. The second reaction is H2O2 on the product side, but I need it on the reactant side. So what I need to do is turn that reaction around. So instead of forming H2O2, I want to decompose it. So let's write that backwards as H2O2 reacts to form H2 plus O2. Now the first thing I need to do is, since I wrote that reaction backwards, I need to change the sign of the heat of that reaction written forward. So instead of a negative 188, that becomes a positive 188 kilojoules. Now there's another problem. I need two moles of H2O2 to decompose. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this equation by two. Now remember, if I have twice as much reactant, I'm going to make twice as much product and my heat magnitude will be twice as big. So I need to double that heat. Now, when I add these two equations together, hopefully I will end up with this equation here. And if so, then I can add these heats together to give me the heat of the reaction. So let's see if these two equations add up to the reaction I'm after. Let me change colors quickly here. All right, what can I get rid of? Let's see, there's two H2s here, and there are two H2s here that can be canceled out. There's a, um, an O2 here that I can cancel out. And I have two O2s here, so I can get rid of one of those. So I'll have one remaining, which is exactly what I'd like. Then I'll have two H2Os remaining. That's good. And I'll have two H2O2s remaining. Excellent. So these two equations do add up to give me the equation that I'm after. So that means I can add their heats together, and I can find the heat of the reaction that I'm after. So let's get our calculators out and add these two together. We have negative 572, and we're going to add to it two times, I'm going to use my parentheses key, two times positive 188. And when I do that, I end up with a negative 196 kilojoules for that reaction. So the heat of the reaction that I was after is negative 196 kilojoules. And that would be the heat for the decomposition of two H2O2s to two waters and an oxygen gas. All right. I know that was a little hard to follow, so let's do another one, okay? All right, let's say I want to find the heat of this reaction right here. Um, two COs plus two NOs make two CO2s and N2. And the heat of that reaction is a mystery. Now I'm going to give you two equations that we can hopefully add together to equal this equation up on top. So once again, the way I like to do this is I like to draw a line, and let's write the reaction that we're after. Two COs plus two NOs react to form 
two CO2s plus an N2. Oh, so I wrote NH2 by mistake. Let me fix that. We just want N2 there. All right, so we're finding the delta H of that reaction. Delta H equals all righty, so let's take a look at the first equation. We need two COs on the left, and the first equation has two COs on the left. So I want to write that as it's written. So that equation, equation A, two COs plus an O2 reacts to form two CO2s. Now the heat of that reaction is negative 566 kilojoules. Now in the second reaction, I need to have N2, or excuse me, NO on the left-hand side. But as you notice, it's on the right-hand side for reaction B. So I need to turn that reaction around. So instead of writing N2 and O2 makes two NO2s, I need to write two NOs make N2 and O2, don't I? Okay, so let's do that. Two NOs react to form N2 and, whoops, and an O2. And the heat of that is positive 180.6 kilojoules. Now, of course, I changed the sign, folks, because I switched that reaction around, didn't I? So when you change the reaction around, that means you have to change the sign from, in this case, a negative to a positive. Now, let's see if these two equations will add up to the reaction that I'm after. So I'll get my blue pen out again, and let's try it, okay? So I have this O2 canceling out that O2. Wonderful. And what do I have remaining on the reactant side? Two COs. Good. Two NOs. Good. Two CO2s are on the product side, and an N2 is on the product side. Yeah, so these two equations add up to be the equation that I'm after, so now I can add their heats together to get the heat of that equation that I'm after. So let's see what that turns out to be. We have a negative 566 plus 180.6, and that gives us negative 385.4 kilojoules for that reaction. Okay, now this is called the long version of Hess's law. We normally don't do the long version, and in the next video, I'm going to show you a short version of Hess's law. It's a shortcut. It'll make your life a little bit easier. However, the long version is useful um, in many situations. Okay, all right, we'll stop there for the day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.